Turkiyal Ashik, the man who's been making all the big fights in the Middle East, now plans to come to the United States and bring the fights here. What does that mean for the scene of boxing in the United States? One thing about fights in the States, man, you got to put on good fights. And that's one thing that Turkey Alashik likes to do. He likes to make the fights that we can't make. And now he's going to not only do it over there, make those fights we can't see. He's going to do it over here. So, man, I'm all for it. Come, coming over here with the big talent. And we got big cars coming our way from Turkey. I'm looking forward to it. We'll see what happens. Right, we go over all the possibilities brought by Saudi money on deep waters right now. That's right. Welcome to Deep Waters, where we discuss all things boxing. Look, there's big money, huge money, then there's Saudi money. They're not the same thing. They're not on the same planet. What is the effect it will have on boxing? That's right. Jimmy Smith alongside Polly Malinaji, Chris Algieri, and Showtime Sean Porter to break down all the possibilities. The first one, of course, was brought to us by X. That's right. Turkey Al Al Sheikh on X, a picture of. Terrence Crawford, the current pound-for-pound -pound king, with his belts in the ring, implying, of course, the next time Crawford fights, it will be with Saudi money and Saudi backing. Now, Boxing Scene says that preliminary conversations have taken place to stage Crawford versus 154-pound WBA champion Israel Madrimov, L.A. Coliseum, August 3rd. Before we dive into anything else, I was a little taken aback, gentlemen, by the choice in opponent. A lot of big names out there. Tough opponent. Tough fight, maybe to the hardcore boxing fans. Is this the right opponent right now when you look at it? Polly Malinaji, let's start with you. Adramov is no, is no slouch, man. I'll tell you what. Not only is he a champion, but he's also not really got the notoriety that uh, a lot of times makes him worth the risk for a guy like Crawford. Obviously, you still favor a guy like Crawford, who is right now zooming, even though at, at, he's at, a, uh, at an advanced age. But, you know, a guy like Adramov, typically he's a guy who's so good but not enough notoriety to where the big names will kind of stay away from him, from him until he gains uh, more notoriety uh, with some title defenses and whatnot. But that's the thing a guy like Turkey Alashik come, brings to the table. Turkey Alashik brings the fact that, you know what, if you're a good fighter, I'm going to pay for you, and I want to see you fight, and I want to make the matches. I don't care about notoriety. I'll make it worth all of these fighters' while to fight each other. And that's the cool thing about Turkey Alashik being in boxing right now. We don't have to worry about marinating fights and saying, oh, when is this fight big enough and all of this other stuff. You know what? If he likes to fight, he's going to make it. And I'll tell you what, Madrimov doesn't really have a big, big following yet. You know, he's known by us hardcore boxing fans, but he's still a dangerous guy, and he still possesses the the, the tools to to be in these, this kind of championship-level fight despite not having the notoriety. So I think al Sheik doing things like this will speed up the process to a lot of the better fights to get made. And, of course, 154-pound division stays alive. It stays well because now you're injecting the blood of Terrence Crawford into the 154-pound division. He's a big name. Should he beat uh, 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 Majamov? He's got a guy who now uh, – uh, what, 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 how do you say his name again? Moretsev? <laughs> there are other possibilities. We were saying at 154 pounds, yeah. could this be the first step, right? Yeah, and that's that's exactly what I'm talking about here, Jimmy. <laughs> in fact, I'm I'm even I'm forgetting his name. This too, this, uh, <laughs> he's got to gain the notoriety enough. But at the same time, I've seen the highlights of this guy. I've seen some footage of this guy. This guy can fight, man. You know, so it's a fight you want to see, and it keeps us uh, brewing in the 154 pound division because Fandora still got to come back from injury. Zoo's got to come back from injury, and you've got a couple of these other guys as well waiting in the wings. Now, Chris, Chris, when you look at this 11 pro fights for Madrimov, right, he's just beginning his career. This is almost first, second year stuff in the pro boxing world. Do you think he has the experience for the limelight for this level of opponent? What do you think about it? No, not at all. Paul, Paul you're, being, you're being really nice to the guy. He doesn't stand a chance against, against Crawford, and that's why he's being picked. There's, so you, you mentioned the other, the other champion. I had to look him up as well. Murtazi Ali, uh, who just beat uh, Cole K to get a championship. He's six feet tall, six foot, six foot one. Madrimov is five foot eight and a half. There's a reason he's being picked. He's got he's got 10, 11 fights, like you said, Jimmy. He's he's a small 54 pounder. Yes, he's very athletic. I called his fights. I called his fight and I was like, damn, that guy's good. Hey, guess what? I called Terrence Crawford's fights too. And I go, damn, that guy's special. Different, different worlds. There's a reason this fight's being made. They're 
they're getting Terrence Crawford a world title at 54. He's been a fourth world class, a fourth weight class with another world title. Fight makes total sense to me. I'm not surprised whatsoever. I don't think Majumov has has the toolbox with only 11 fights as, as a pro to really phase a guy like Terrence Crawford. And Terrence Crawford, man, I mean, his professional experience is on a whole different level. His talent level is on a whole different level. That guy's like an alien in there. He figured out he figures guys out so quick. This is going to remind me of the uh, Kavalowskis fight, the Mean Machine. He's going to be competitive early. He's going to be aggressive. He's going to be physical. He's going to be strong. But once Terrence figures you out, it's a whole different planet. And uh, yeah, I, I I don't think this is a close fight at all. Now, so my my question for you, is Showtime. When it comes to Terrence Crawford, man, as dominant as he looked, coming off a huge win over Errol Spence, is this the kind of fight that gets him excited, that gets him back in the ring for the fans? Does it work for you? Uh, <laughs> I was on the phone with my boy this morning, and uh, he he told me that he has some money coming his way. And um, I don't think he's fighting solely for the money. I think he still, he knows that there's some more things that he could etch into his legacy. Amazing legacy to this point, but he's still hungry. The question how is because he still lives in the same mindset, the same, the same space that he's lived in the entirety of his life. He's got this chip on his shoulder. And unfortunately for the boxing world, until he's done with the sport, that chip is going to be on his shoulder. The difference between getting in the ring with somebody 10 and 0 and getting in the ring with a boot who's like 30 something or close to 20 something and 0, the difference here is Al Ali Shikir can can spend the money. And that's why you're going to see Terrence Crawford get in the ring with a guy who's 10 and 0 because uh, a 10 and 0 fighter, he's going to bring the money that a, that a boots in this is not going to bring even though they they're probably on the same level in terms of notoriety in terms of the the profile they're probably on the same level obviously here in the states boots and is on a bigger level than 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 the other gentleman is but boots is not going to bring that money and nobody is going to spend nobody here in the united states is going to spend the money that crawford wants to get in the ring with somebody like ennis so when you see this here you saying hey Boots is, or uh, you say uh, Terrence is ducking boots. He's not ducking boots. He's making the money he wants to make. He's fighting the fighters that he wants to fake, fight. And that sounds a lot like what Floyd Mayweather did when he was on his way out. So hey, this Floyd, is where we're at. Yeah, Floyd Money Mayweather set the tone, right? He's the one that made the map, the treasure map that other boxers are trying to get to. But the map has changed. The X now means Saudi money. We discuss all the implications right after this. Wednesday Night Fights. On the next Wednesday Night Fight, April 24th, Ramon Cardenas returns to defend his WBA regional title against the hard-hitting Eduardo Ramirez. That's right, two super bantamweights who don't know how to do anything but come forward and throw big punches. It is on next Wednesday. Don't miss it here on Pro Box TV. So we've been discussing it all week. Saudi money, but one of the things we've been discussing is could it make boxing more niche by having the biggest fights, the biggest crowds overseas in the Middle East where your average fan can't go and see them? Well, uh, the thing is, Turkey Al Al Sheikh is bringing fights to London. He's bringing them to the United States. Gentlemen, my question for you is, is this exactly the right thing? A couple days ago, we were saying, yeah, the big fights used to be in Vegas. They used to be in New York. It brings fans in. Well, it looks like that's what Al Al Sheikh is doing right now. Pauly, what do you think about his international approach to making big fights? Do you think it rejuvenates or improves boxing in the United States? This is the, the move that we boxing needs. You need a guy who has the know-how, uh, the funds, the passion and ambition for the sport to be able to supersede promotional boundaries, business promotional boundaries, and, and make fights that we want to watch regardless of who signed to who and what network has the ties into what and to who. And I think that al -Ashik has all of those key components uh, and he brings all those key components into boxing, into the business, and into the sport in order to make all these things happen. And I, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I got my fingers crossed. Listen, you know, boxing always is a way to disappoint us. Uh, but we're like uh, disgruntled fans, but we just keep coming back, right? As boxing fans, as fighters, and and I think this is another one of those moments right now where we're getting our hopes up. And I think Turkey Al has the the all, like I said, all the components and all the qualities and all, and like I said, be it funding, be it passion and ambition for the sport, be it. Be it um the uh, uh the intention and then the 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 fanfare that he has and the, the momentum he's bringing, that things positive things could happen here. I got my fingers crossed and I'm hoping for the best. 
Chris, when you look at this, could we see an artificial inflation of the purses, right? Saudi money, as we said, this Madrimov fight, who cares if he's got 11 pro fights? Crawford's going to make big money. That's going to make the fight happen. Could we see a negative in this, in an artificial inflation that's kind of above the market for boxing? Well, we had a couple of negatives. I mean, for one, we, we spoke about it the other day. We said, like, we're, we're, we're removing the ability for fans to actually be boots on the ground and watch these fights yeah. live. But al now is bringing the fights over to the States. Then my worry was, well, he's going to inflate the market, and he's going to, he's, he's going to break the market. Now you're going to have fighters who are going to look out for, whole, for, for the big money. They're going to look out for the Saudi money, and they're going to look out for the ability to go over there. But if he comes over here, and he's sticking with the passion that he has, I mean, I don't know, man. I, th th he doesn't seem like he's a fly-by-night kind of guy. He looks like he's here to stay. And you hey, listen, call it money moves. Call it boss moves. I call it super fan moves. I think we got a guy who is a very passionate boxing fan. And there are fights that he wants to see. He sees that the sport is broken, and he has the ability to fix it. I mean, we've never had somebody able to do this, who can literally come in from the outside, fly in and be like, all right, you know what? This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. I, I got the funds to make this thing work. I can do this. I want to do that. Regardless, I want to make these fights. I want to see these fights happen. Let's do it. Oh, you don't want, you don't want to come over here? Cool, I'll come over there. He, he, he doesn't care. He wants to see the fights by any means necessary. And I mean, as long as that lasts and as long as that passion is there, as long as he's able to make these fights, I think it's great for boxing. Listen, Show to he's, yeah. You know, uh, boxing set its own standard. You know, that's, that's one thing that people don't really even understand about this sport. The fans don't understand that boxing set its own standard. The, the, the level that we make per four round, per six, per eight, and the list goes on, has been set by, by what boxing felt it should do. You know, I truly believe fighters are, are deserving of and, and should be compensated much more than just a dollar sign. You know what I mean? And on top of that, I'm going to go ahead and say it. We pay to, to receive a prize. You know, the belts. We pay for those belts. The standard has been set. I like the fact that this man is coming over here and he's calling the shots that he wants to call. And I believe, if anything, he's resetting the standard that boxing should live by. I don't believe that that anybody can match his purses. I don't think anyone will try. But at the least, you're going to erase what has been done and if, at the least try to recreate what it can be and what I personally believe boxing should be from a standpoint of, you know, the finances for fighters and, and, the, and the stability and the, and the help that fighters receive. They're going to get much more from this, and I I, I love every bit of it. Sean, Paulie, you made me think of something real quick. Yeah, real, sorry, Jimmy, maybe think of something real quick. I, I believe in sumo wrestling, if you're the Yokozuna, if you're the champion, I believe that they pay you a salary. How crazy is it? We pay, we pay for the belt. And in, in, in sumo, they pay the champion. It, it's completely backward. You know, the, you, you, the fighter <laughs> fights, you know, we, we pay for the belts we fight for. How does that make sense? Where in other sports, you're the champion, you get paid more. You win the Super Bowl, you make more but, money. But, but, you are they the NFL. But, but are they making as much money as high-level high boxers in, 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 in sumo wrestling, though? Is it, are their purses the same? You know, that's also, I, honestly, I know, I know they live, a, uh, they live well. I'm sure they're not living yeah. like, and listen, box, boxers are some of the highest paid athletes in any sport every year after year. So they're and definitely that, not going to be the same level as fighters. And, that, and that, that makes me want to touch on something Jimmy said about the inflating the market. The inflating the market is, is a bit of a risk. It's something to talk about and bring to the table because you're going to also have a possibility to see fighters wanting to wait on the sidelines, hoping that they get that big offer. So it's going to make your business savvy outside the ring have to be a little more shrewd here. You know, is it worth waiting out on the sidelines to get an offer from Tokyo Alashik and, and maybe never get that offer and then you don't fight or – is it worth just continuing to fight and maybe you gain his interest and he'll bring in money to you? You know, it's, 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 there's a, there's a bit of savvy there too that has to be used in the outside approach for these fighters as well. If the market starts to blow up, because if you start to blow up the market like that, it's still not going to blow up for everybody. So what happens, you know, you're going to, are you going to have fighters that are going to looking to, that are looking to hold off and not make the fights like you sometimes have right now, because they're hoping to get that big money offer. You know, it seems like when Canelo mentioned Turkey al and Saudi money, uh, the guy basically holds Canelo to F off. He, he ended up talking about he wants to make Benavides in the winner of of, uh, of Better Be and Bebo instead after the Ravazic fight. So, so you know, I mean, this guy can also be turned on and off, uh, so to speak, uh, as far as what he wants to spend and what he doesn't want. Well, Canelo Al Al Sheik brings together our next topic, right? There are American promoters out there. Oscar De La Hoya, his prominence, is it up or down with Ryan Garcia, Garcia facing Devin Haney? We'll discuss it right after this.
Welcome back to Deep Waters. This weekend, Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, millions and millions being bet on this fight. Where do you put your money? Our own Jim Rodriguez is going to help you out with that. You know, in boxing, you've got the A side and the B side. Well, here at Pro Box TV, we've got the better side. And let's get into the big fight in Brooklyn this weekend. It's Devin Haney defending the Super Lightweight Championship against Ryan Garcia. And if you go to sportsbetting.ag, Huge favorite is Devin Haney, net laying minus 900. Ryan Garcia, big underdog at plus 550. So how do we get into this? Well, if Garcia is your guy, getting five and a half to one, that's the best bet you're going to find. He could actually win this fight. Lightning quick hands, right? But if you like Haney, where do you get the value? Well, the value comes here at the better side. How about under 10 and a half rounds. That's a plus money at sportsbetting.ag. Plus 160. I get it. Haney doesn't finish, guys, right? 31 and 0, only 15 knockouts. And after the sideshow Ryan Garcia has put him through, he's going to be like a cat playing with his food. I think it's going to be the referee that's going to make us cash that ticket. He's going to stop the fight under 10 and a half. That's my play. I think it should be yours, too, especially at plus 160. I'm Jim Rodriguez, and that's the better side. Damn it, I hate agreeing with Jim, but that's a really good bet. You see the tail of tape in front of you. Undefeated Devin Henney, 31 0, 15 knockouts, 24 and 1. Ryan Garcia, but hey, man, you shove a man on top of the Empire State Building. Maybe that gets him upset and we see a knockout. I hate agreeing with Jim, but certainly could happen. Look, look at the promoters, not the fights right now. Oscar De La Hoya, gentlemen, a little while ago, Golden Boy Oscar De La Hoya looked like a dumpster fire with him going back and forth to Canelo, that horrible breakup. Then, of course, the back and forth between Ryan Garcia and Oscar De La Hoya on Twitter. But Oscar putting this fight together, looking like it's being promoted well, is he rehabilitating his image in the boxing world, Polly? What do you think? I mean, listen, he's, I've been looking at the boxing calendar, and I realized that for Oscar De La Hoya's company, Golden Boy Promotions, this is a really big couple of weeks here because you got Ryan Garcia taking on Devin Haney, and a win for Devin Haney, I mean, a win for Ryan Garcia would be a shock upset, but it would set uh, Golden Boy and Ryan Garcia to shooting to the moon as far as the promotability and, and the big news that they would make and, and generate. And then just a couple of weeks later, you have an, uh, he has an under underdog who is very live to me, uh, Jaime Munguia against Canelo Alvarez. You know, we've seen Canelo look a little bit lackluster in recent performances, and Munguia is a young, uh, kind of hot shot, exciting guy. And and you have the whole uh, uh, animosity between Canelo's old promoter and, and Canelo now, and uh, being Oscar being the old promoter. And you have a lot of newsworthy uh, sound bites, so to speak, and, and quotable, so to speak. So I think in the next couple of weeks, Golden Boy has the potential to corner kind of join the fray in the big three if they get some results. Even if they get one result here, if they get two results, I mean, dude, that just I mean, you're gonna see Oscar. Oscar's doing if you know Oscar was wacky before, if Oscar's two fighters win in these couple <laughs> weeks, Oscar's gonna go go absolutely AWOL. And then who knows what's gonna happen. But I'll tell you what, even if one of them wins, if even if Golden Boy is able to get one win in that in these two major fights, I think it really, really puts Golden Boy on a solid path. No, Chris, is, is there no such thing as bad publicity? Is, is it the idea that all these you know, controversial things at least keep Oscar Dillahoy's name in the public eye? It just generates more interest. What do you think of that theory, man? Well, Jimmy, it depends on the result. Because if, if all this bad publicity, all this bad marketing, when I consider this bad, this buildup to this fight has been bad, I think they missed, <laughs> I think they missed the mark. Damn. They missed the mark. <laughs> and, but if Ryan goes out there and knocks out Devin Haney, maybe crazy like a fox. You know, it worked out. Same thing with Munguia. You know, you know, Munguia's coming up after his champion, but I have a great point. Two underdog fights within three weeks of each other. Major, major events. Both of them are events. They're, these are really big fights. And a lot of eyes are going to be there. And Oscar's in both uh, as a promoter. So, uh, and I agree 100%. A one win out of those two, and he is very much in the mix. Uh, but uh, when it comes to marketing, and Oscar De La Hoya has been a master of marketing during his own career. He's been a master of marketing during his... Uh, promotional career. He's also been really bad at times as well. But at the end of the day, as long as the results speak for themselves, if the fighters win, it, does, it doesn't matter. If Ryan, if Ryan wins this thing, all this nonsense doesn't matter. He's going to say, I told you so, I told you so, I told you so, I'm the man, what's next? Just get your checkbook out. And that's really, that's how boxing works. Showtime, I heard you laughing about this promotion, you know, over the top, bad. I mean, this, these are normal boxing words, right? Does it ever get too much? Is this one too much for you? 
Uh, for me, it's too much for me, man. The climate that we live in now, and, you know, it just kind of is what it is. People, I'm going to just go ahead and say people like buffoonery. They like, mm -hmm. this is what people, it turns people on. It's a part of life, I suppose. Um, I don't endorse it, but I understand it. That being said. It's uh, part of this I mean, generation, I, Sean. It's not a part of life. It's a part of this generation. Oh, perfect. Yeah, per well said. It is, yeah. I, and I'll start saying that myself. Thank you, Chris. It is definitely part of this generation. I'm not knocking the generation. I understand it. I don't have to, I don't have to, you know, subject Dude. myself to it. And I haven't. Um, the most that I've seen Ryan do was today being at the press conference. And I'm just like bug eyed. I'm like, what is going on? Um, if I was I, I do. I feel like this is a it's a it shines a light on Oscar De La Hoya and who he is as a promoter. Again, we're talking about Turkey coming over here. Turkey's not having any of that nonsense. Please come over here and and let's stop this and get back to the professionalism. Let's stop this and get back to the classy way of promoting fights. Uh, Paulie did a fantastic job at promoting fights. Chris and myself, fantastic job in our in our own way. But at the end of the day. It was classy. It was stuff that people could connect to. And I'm looking forward to getting back to that. Turkey would not allow any of this to be. We wouldn't hear those things going on on stage. I think it's messy. I think it leaves a dirty stain on us, on the sport that's already has enough stains. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm, I'm through with it. Uh, all that being said, though, I think that uh, Ryan Garcia is going to do something crazy on fight night. I do think we'll get a really good boxing match. Like what? Um, Quit. I, I love it when you bring up what we're going to talk about, gentlemen. We're going to get to that in a second. What does Oscar De La Hoya do with a victorious Ryan Garcia? What does he do with a defeated Ryan Garcia? We'll tackle it when we come back. Welcome back to Deep Waters. The burning question, Ryan Garcia might win this weekend, might lose. What does Oscar De La Hoya do with him? What is your thoughts, Polly Malinaji? What does he do with a victorious or a losing Ryan Garcia? If he wins, you probably uh, go in a rematch with Devin Haney. I assume that's probably the most likely scenario. If he wins, especially if there's uh, any kind of controversy or any kind of competitive fight or super fight or whatnot, or shock, you know, the, just the shock value of it, I assume. If he loses, you do what you did after the Javante Davis fight. The kid's still sell. He has an idiot fan base, so they'll still keep watching him either way. <laughs> So you'll uh, you'll just recycle him against uh, a guy who makes some sandwiches across the street, and then uh, you get him a couple wins like that, and then you put him back in with a big name, and you do the same thing all over again and hope that he can win. win. <laughs> Either way, Broly Romero, win or lose, Ooh. that's the next fight. <laughs> that's the next fight. Broly Romero, Ryan Bro. Garcia wins this fight. He's on top of the world. Oh man, he just beat, he just beat the man. Could you I don't need, imagine? I don't need rematch. I beat Could you. you. Could you imagine if Ryan beat build up to that and then, and then and then Rolly knocks out and then Rolly knocks out Ryan? Yeah. <laughs> Showtime, horrible. what's your thoughts on this, man? What's your thoughts on his next one? Are you are you with Chris on this one? I'm with both of them. I mean, like Paulie knows the business. That's exactly how the business runs, which is BS. And then Chris, you're spot on. Like, what more do you want from a Ryan Garcia win, lose, or draw here? You move on and you go get Roly. I think, if anything, that's the most evenly matched uh, big name out there for both gentlemen. I think that and it that's, sells. It's a and fight. it sells. The fight and sells. It sells. Barroso. Barroso. I want to see Barroso in there. Oh, dude, they're going to avoid him like the plague. They're going to wait for him to, to literally age overnight. <laughs> we can go forever, gentlemen, age, talking right? about the possibility. He's, he's like an avocado. They're waiting. They're waiting for <laughs> him out. There are so many for Ryan Garcia. If he wins, if he loses, all well, his fan base, they'll follow him anyway. But we'll be back with the news. That's right, on Deep Waters. Win or lose, one thing you can always depend on is us. We'll see you next time.